Well, lacrosse would get you in good shape. It's work for Matt Oglesby and Jake Berge. In a moment, we'll preview the upcoming season of the world champion Philadelphia Wings with Matt and Jake when we return. What? My next guests tonight really want to get into the whole workout thing, the exercise regimen. We are talking to the Philadelphia Wings like you guys need it. Jake Berge is here and Matt Oglesby. How are you? Good. Great. Happy New, New Year. Year. Yeah, Me happy too. New Year to you. You are about to defend your championship. Friday yet night. another Wings championship. Friday night, 7.30, Buffalo. Buffalo? Yep. Are they any good? Bunch of Canucks. Really? Uh, from the reservation, a lot of Indians. Oh, really? Yep. Tough? Always tough. Oh my. Well, we they play the game. They, they, they kind of feel like that we stole their lands a long time ago, and we're the Aryans. They're after us. They're tough, those Indians. And then the Canadians, a lot of donut shop workers who come down here and try to get some revenge Pretty on us. Pretty tough, hard-nosed guys. Yeah. You couldn't have got yeah. me Finneran? You couldn't have <laughs> got Finneran? You got this, you got this guy? A little different personality than Finneran. <laughs> so t tell me about what your off-season's been like. I know you, you guys do other things, but you're coming off a 9-3 and three regular season. You started again, and, and it's, it's got to be just a great feeling going into the new season. Yeah, it's like great. This. Well, I mean, we're pretty fortunate, Jake and I, because we kind of have an entrepreneurial background. We do camps. I work for Nike, and uh, we're doing a wings camp this summer. But uh, basically, I travel around the country all, all summer, and I, and I develop markets for, for Nike, um, lacrosse markets. I do San Diego, Park City, Utah, St. Louis, Missouri, and two at Lawrenceville. Mm -hmm. And uh, it affords me a good lifestyle during the season where in the beginning of the week, I can do double sessions. You know, during the morning, I've, I'll do spin class or I'll do yoga or I'll play a little basketball. In the afternoon, I get to lift and do my sprints. And I get to do that until Wednesdays, and then Wednesday night we have practice. And then you kind of taper down at the end of the, the week. What's, so it, what's it been like for it's, you? It's pretty much the same thing with me. Uh, I've done a lot of camps and clinics and, and so forth throughout the year. Um, right now, I, I do a uh, little part-time work at a place called Sportsplex out in uh, Westchester, which is... I run clinics out there and, and um, run lacrosse leagues for mostly 5th, uh, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade grade kids. So, uh, you know, that's keeping me busy along with the season. Um, you know, ready to get back into the swing of things, though. Can you, uh, can you repeat, make it two in a row this year? Absolutely. What's, what's the, well, t really, t tell me what the league looks like this year. I, I would say the word would be parity. You know, there's a lot of e <coughs> even teams, and you never know. I mean, this, this game is a crazy game, and if you don't come to play, obviously, my dad hates me when I say, you know, you don't come to play. We're obviously there to play, but if you don't, if you don't have a good game that night, anybody can take you. Last year, New York took us home. We had our biggest crowd of the year, unfortunately, 17,000. We're hoping to get on Friday night as well, but, you know, you never know with this and a lot of even evenly matched teams and w the word I mean we're not complacent at all because I don't think we had a very good preseason at all and uh, we have a lot of new guys who have to learn their roles and we lost a lot of role players Gabrielson uh, retired Volker, reti yeah they retired big thing that we lost uh, a lot last year was a lot of heart you know just the, the leaders of the team I mean they were all great players don't get me wrong but um, you know, it's, it's hard, to, hard to replace a, a guy like Scott Gabrielson and Steve Govett, you know, that their heart is in the game so much. And now some of the younger guys like Matt and myself, you know, we're, we're trying to fill those roles, um, you know, that, that were lost. So it's going to be a different team than, than last year. But uh, on, the same, on the same note, we have a lot of uh, great players, great athletes. And uh, I think, uh, you know, we should be right there again this year. You're on the attack. Matt's a forward. Give, give me a little thumbnail of Matt Oglesby as a player. Matt Oglesby is, uh, I'll tell you what, he's the type of guy you definitely want on your team. You know, he'll go into the corner, um, get all the ground balls, you know, really gritty, gritty type guy. Um, and, and he shows on both ends of the field. One, he can, I think he was the fourth leading scorer on the team. And he also got a defensive MB, MVP for our team. So, um, you know, Matt's got it all. Now, now tell me about the, the uh, <laughs> leader in penalty minutes on the team. Well, I was, Mr. Berge, yeah, he's the a, leader. He's and a you goon. were the fourth leading scorer. He's a goon. But I, you know what? I would say two <laughs> words. Goon. Gene pool. And I'd say <laughs> Bill he, he pulls from a pretty good gene pool. I, you know, he's the next. You talk about Gary Gate. We were ta discussing yeah. about Gary before. You know, he's the uh, benchmark player of the league. He's the premier player of the league. And I think Jake is, I mean, he's only in the second second year and there you know he's already top you know two or three guys on our team big time and we have Dallas Elliott between between the pipes that's very big but Jake can go both ways 
he's one of the best athletes I've ever seen. Speed, quickness, agility. I wish if, if I had those genes, I wouldn't have to work out as hard as I do. <laughs> well, why why all the uh, the penalty minutes? Again, leader. Of, uh, first of all, I think you kind of like it. Yeah. Isn't that true? You like the penalty minutes a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I like. Well, you don't I, like I don't the like the penalty minutes, but um, you know, my style of play is is you know, I, I like to I like to think of it that I have the the toughness and the grit that you know to get in the corners, but also have the finesse on offense to score some goals. Um, and it is hard to score goals in this league with the with the nets shrunk down from the outdoor game, which what we what we're used to. But uh, you know. I like to to think that I can score goals, but if you know if someone's going to come pushing me around, I'm not going to back down to them. What, what's what's the flavor, of the appeal of this game? You said you, in New York you had your biggest crowd, seventeen thousand. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. That's a lot of fans mm -hmm. for for a sport that is not known as one of the major sports. But with seventeen thousand, what's what's the future of this? Well, I'll tell you one thing. There's two kind of the. the the makeup of our fan base is basically you got a lot of you pull from ma the main line and you pull from the Cherry Hill area where um, pretty affluent families um, whose kids and they, it's a big family thing and then you pull from a whole different kind of uh, environment and uh, you know it, it's just a fast up paced game and as I mentioned before I mean you got these these kids like Jake and I, I went to Duke University on a, a on a scholarship and I was able to do that and the kids look up to those kind of players and you know that we started where they were and now we're in the wings uniform I remember watching Chris Flynn and, and Gabe's and all those guys who played with me last year you know I went to those games when I was in sixth and seventh grade we're not going to tell how old they are but <laughs> I mean I was watching those guys as I was growing up and uh, you know you kind of have to pay your dues and go through the, the the high school and then the Duke level and then you come back and you play for the wings and I think those that's what you know those kids are looking for what what's the aside from Philadelphia where's where's the hotbed uh, of, of the sport well I think uh, in, besides Philadelphia I mean, Philadelphia bar none is the, is the best place to play and not just because that we play here and all our fans are here but um, you know we pack the house more than anyone else also I'd say Buffalo Buffalo has a real good following um, hopefully this year they got a new team up in Toronto or an, o an old team that moved to Toronto and uh, Hopefully, you know, a couple of the hockey guys, Bobby Orr and uh, I think Ty Domi, a couple guys bought the team up there. So um, hopefully it picks up up there. Um, New York is pretty good, Long Island. So, uh, you know, it's, it's starting to grow, which, which is good. That's what we want to see. Um, Baltimore, they, they still think it's a lot of, it's like, it's not the field game. You know, Baltimore, the purest, pure lacrosse players. Right. And Maryland and yeah. Hopkins, right. they're all down that's there. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So it's starting to grow. So that's but Philadelphia cool. is coming on the forefront of lacrosse, which is, and again, I was telling you, I developed these markets around the country, and it's it's great to see Philadelphia is really coming on as a hotbed for lacrosse, and we're creating our own style, which is great. The um, the Baltimore kids are usually the flashy sticks, and the the Long Island guys in New York, you know, it's a Northeast sport. Long Island Long Island guys and the upstate New York guys are the hard nosed, you know, hard working, play defense first, and then. Um, get on the offensive end. Tell, tell me a little bit about Buffalo and what they present for you on Friday night. Is that a, is that a good opponent well, to uh, open with? Yeah, absolutely. Buffalo, uh, well, we, we opened this with them last year and uh, everyone wrote us off at the beginning of the year. Um, it was it was taped live, or it was shown live back here in Philly and um, you know, no one gave us a chance going into it. And you beat them. Yeah, and we, 14, we beat them pretty, pretty handily and, it, and we beat them a lot worse than the score showed because they had like the last four or five goals like with not much time left. But uh, they got this guy, John Tavares, who's a pretty premier player in the league, and we got to stop him. Um, but, you know, again, I think, uh, I think we can play with anyone in the league. You know, everyone's right there tight together, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can emerge on top again. You, you won best out of three in the final series against Baltimore. Predictions for this season for, from you first, Matt? I mean, we'll, we'll see. Um, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And, I, you know, a lot of the guys have to do it, you know, during the week. We have Wednesday night practice and then games from now on, Monday through Friday. You know, you have to put your all and remember that you're doing it for the next guy. And, uh, you know, I know Jake and I are doing it. I know a lot of the other guys are doing it. But people have to step up, know their roles. And if, um, if people do that, we have Dallas Ellick between the cage. We have Kevin Finner and Tommy Marichek, Jake Berge, those kind of guys. You know, we could do it again. Real quick, your thoughts? I feel I feel anything less than a championship would would you know not be a great season. Um, coming in last year and, and taking it when no one gave us a chance. Um, now you know people still don't think we're the 
we're the best team in the league, and, and we just have to go out and show them again that we are. Friday night, Buffalo Bandits, what time? 7.30. 7.30. Get there right early because they're raising the banner. They're raising the banner. Raising yeah, the banner congratulations for, for that. The world champion. Thank you. Philadelphia Wings, Matt Oglesby, Jake Berge. That's all the time we have. We also want to thank Al Q, Gurley, Bob DeBolt, Brian Wolfinger, Deborah Cohen.